Hi everybody and welcome back to KO Airbrushing and Design Channel. Um, I'm going to be doing the uh, second part in the chrome demonstration today. So that's going to be the chrome chain this time. We did the, uh, the ball, the cone, and the cube in the first one with a minor editing error on my part. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, second, second one now we'll be doing the chrome chain. Um, using House of Color paint again, uh, which is the same as what I used in the last one. Um, also going to be using Iwata airbrushes, um, but you can use Badger, you can use pretty much anything out there that you have, not going to be a problem. And like I said before, you can also use this technique in different mediums as well. So any other type of paint, charcoal, pencil, crayon, anything like that, this technique will still work for you. So, okay, let's get started. Uh, we'll get the camera turned around and be right back. Okay, and as you can see, I've already got my stencil laid out and ready to go here. Um, paint's already in the brushes. So, um, again, I'm using the same stuff that I used in the video last week. Uh, so this is the spray mask from Avery. It is an Avery product. Um, So basically ran it through my cutter, cut everything, um, it's already laid out. Um, I've pulled out the one set of chains. The ones that are going to connect them are going the other way and they'll be pulled out later. Um, starting off with the blue, same as I did last time. I've marked down on here, so you've got your sky color is going to be coming straight down from the top. So that's what we're going to lay in first. I'm probably going to, I am going to add some magnets here just to hold these down just in case it's not sticking super great which is okay because it doesn't take much slightly different blue this time than I did last week. This is a little bit more of a greener blue, but a sky color can, can vary quite a bit. So in this case, because we are using sky as a reflective color. And again, what you want to remember is that your sky color is coming straight down from the top. And because this is a round object, you might want to bring it down just a little bit. But it's going to stop. It's not going to carry down into here. Now what's going to happen is it's going to change sides. Open up that top edge just a little bit more. So now what's going to happen is it's going to be this side here that's going to be catching it now. So that's what I've tried to do with this, is I've tried to make it so that each link is a little bit different angle so that you can see how I change where I lay the color from one angle to the next. Okay, so this one here, we're going to be doing the same thing. The only thing that's going to be different now is that the blue is going to be predominant at the other end. it's going to be the opposite end of the length that's going to get the majority of the blue on this one. And again, like I said before, if anybody has any questions whatsoever, please leave them in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Feel free to make suggestions. I try and give you guys a good camera angle to see from.
going to go across to the last one yet I'll move everything over so that we can do the other ones so that you can see them I'll come back over here and again now we got to think that the sky color is going to be in a different location again This time we're going to be almost the entire top of the loop. And then down the side. And now we're going to end up cutting off right about there. we've changed direction here so if your lights coming from directly above it's not going to be able to get around the corner there but now again we get blue that hits from there and runs all the way up and it will stop right about there you're not going to see anything up here because it's on the opposite side of the loop. Okay, so we'll move over to this one. about where you're going to end because you're starting to slope back again so even though this one's at a slightly different angle than the last one we did it's still going to be fairly close to the same effect and again it's going to catch the bottom a little bit farther Sorry, I didn't move that down far enough. I'll do it this time. There we go. same time. So again, same thing. And we're looking at the top. Make sure I got the camera in the right place. As soon as that goes so that it's starting to curve the other way, your blue stops. <clears throat> That's as far as it can go. Coming around that 
corner. Just get to there. So this is very close to how you do your light source, right? Except your light source is coming from a different direction. And again, being chrome, and, and now you have to think that these are a rounded object. So you're talking about something that's circular, not just flat, right? So you have to round that high blue around and same with the black and your highlights again same for the same reason you're probably not you might have a highlight right along the edge but you'll have another one in a little bit showing that that's a rounded object okay we'll finish these three i'll try and remember to move the camera this time <clears throat> These things get so sticky when you get close. So this one is pretty much straight up and down. So what's going to happen with this one is you're going to have your blue at the top. You can kind of fade it out as it goes around the corner. And then same on your bottom side. Okay, and we'll go up and we'll do the top one. So that's basically all you're going to have on this one, just because of the angle that it's sitting at, right? It's going to be your top and your bottom. <clears throat> I mean, you can, if you want, bring it down the sides a little bit. But you're not going to want to bring it down all the way. Right, halfway to be fine. And same over here now, top edge. And bottom edge. And one last one to do on this round. going to be that very top edge. Okay, and that's all we need for blue for this pass. So I'm going to switch over to our black. just going to go in with the black. <clears throat> so again, the same thing what you want to do is you want to have a horizon line just like we did last time. Only it's going to be a little bit more complicated this time because now it's going to start running 
I find this is by far the easiest way to make your magnets effective or, or to keep your stencils down because you can move them around so easily, right? And I still need two more. There. <clears throat> so now I've got the horizon line in on the bottom edge there. Is what we did before. Actually, I'm going to put them on that side. I don't need them there. I need them down here. There. That's better. Figure out what I'm doing. <coughs> okay. So now you want to darken up that bottom edge just like we did before in, in the last video. because we still have the other stencils on for the other pieces of the chain we're basically outlining it as we go said last week you still want to try and leave a little bit of a of a not quite so dark area in the center of your chrome on the bottom to under light everything side also want to lay in a shadow because our light source is coming in from over here. So you need a little bit of a shadow under that one. shadow on this side here it could extend all the way down to the corner if you wanted it to depending on how your chain link is sitting in the in the other link
you could take it all the way down like that or a little farther okay and then we're going to do the closest one and you could actually start with the shadow if you want on this side just to, so you know where it's going to be so in this case I'll put it down here more and the shadow is going to round again because this is a round object that shadow is going to be more round like that and yeah I know my mask is lifting so I'm just starting to treat it like a loose mask now which means you want to spray from the side away from where it opens see where it ends off and it's going to end off right in about there good thing I got those magnets see how this starts to come together on this um, I'm gonna do the next one down here and then I'm gonna finish up the other ones and I'll come back we'll do the highlights I'll do a few of those then I'll take a break come back when I'm done them and we'll start on the next set of links because the technique is basically going to be the same for all of these now. It's just going to be a matter of where does your shadow fall. And in this case, it's just a horizon line. I'm not actually using it in conjunction with the light source. You could actually do that if you wanted to, which would shift your shadows over 
but it would also change how they interact with your sky color as well. So it depends on exactly what you're trying to achieve, but you definitely can do that. Okay, so I'll do these next two, then I'll take a break, do the other ones and come back. Otherwise this is going to get kind of repetitive and boring for you guys. So I'll just speed things up a little bit. <clears throat> I'm going to do these two because these ones have quite a bit of a different angle. So you can see how I approach those. So again, you have to look at where that edge is going to be in there. So I'm going to come up probably right about there. And you're going to come down. And you're going to drop in pretty much in that area. So yeah, like the way I'm doing this is I'm just doing this in, in perfect opposition to the horizon or to the to the sky color. Which is the most common way of doing it. There are certain times when chrome was done where if it's in the dark, for example, then all your highlights and everything are going to have to do with your light sources. Um, same with your horizon line, they're all going to work in conjunction with your light sources as opposed to with the sky. Like I said in the last video, just remember that chrome is just a mirror. So whatever's around, it's going to see it. I think one of the most effective uses of chrome that, that I've seen in a long time, maybe ever, was uh, a place called Bouchard Gardens in, it, it's on Vancouver Island in Canada, and it is an incredible um, botanical garden. And right in the middle of this garden where four different paths come together and across, it's basically the very, very center of the garden. They've got about a three foot chrome ball set up on a pedestal. So you walk around it and it just reflects everything in the garden. It's just amazing. And so that might be something if you want, look that up and take a look at it. There should be pictures of that online, I'm quite sure. I'm getting black paint all over my hand. <clears throat> my magnet's down to do the bottom edge piece. Again, because of the difference in the angle of this link, it's picking things up at a different angle, different location on the link. your shadows on this one are going to, going to be quite a bit different too. So 
Yeah, and down this side, this is going to pick up groundwork still. Again, that could be bigger if you want it to be like that other one. I mean, it's the same size link. Basically, all you would do is just angle the shadow down more. Like that. And because we are playing with light source now, there's only going to be just a little bit of a shadow here. other one here because this one here the shadows are going to fall completely different just because of the way that the links are connected so this one again is going to start right in there somewhere so it's underneath the other link. Like I said, I'll finish spraying this one, and then I will cut the recording, finish the other one. Come back, and we'll do highlights on a few, so that you get an idea how to do that. Then I'll finish those up, and then we'll pull the other ones, and do the same. And the other links are going to be actually fairly straightforward compared to these ones. Because the other ones you're just looking at one side of the link. I could have rotated the other links so that they're not just laying flat, but I didn't think for the demo that that was actually a necessary thing to do. It would be the same technique as this. Again, it would just change slightly how the shadows are going to interact, how the reflections are going to interact. And it's the same thing when you're trying to do that. Just remember, it's a mirror. A three-dimensional mirror. A three-dimensional curved mirror. Okay, so now, like I said, the shadows are going to be a little bit different on this. The light source here is a little bit above. substantial and actually come from a little bit out further. So I'm just take that one and run it right straight in there. Okay. 
Okay, so we got those ready now. I'm actually going to cut the recording here. I will finish up the black on the other five, and then I'll come back and we will do the highlights on the same four, and then I will do the other five again, um, pull the center pieces off, come back, and we'll, we'll do the rest. <clears throat> so I will be back in just a few minutes. As you can see, I've got the shadows pretty much the way I want them. So now we'll go in and we'll do the highlighting. And now you're going to want to watch for the light source. So in this case, the light source is coming from the top left. And again, I like to have the light source so that it's on this side of the object. not coming directly down from above like the sky color is. So now you can basically, the shadows don't matter, where the sky color is doesn't matter. All you need to worry about is that. So your hot spot's gonna be right over here. And like I said, I'm gonna keep it away from the edge because I want it to look like a three-dimensional object, not something that's flat. And you can run it around a little bit. But there you go, that's where your hotspot's basically going to be on that one. And then I always like to put a bit of a flare. just so you know exactly where that light's coming from. <clears throat> now the other spot you're going to have one on here is going to be right down in, in this area. Now because there's a shadow there from the piece that's over top, just move it over slightly. a little bit <clears throat> let's brighten that up a touch now it's up to you whether you want to put a flare down at this end or not just because of the angle of where that is but it's not too far off so in this case I'm going to go ahead and do that Oh, there's your highlight. So again, this is still a simple chrome. It's not hard to do at all. Now, once you're done at this stage, you can go in and you can put in nice bright white highlights wherever you want them. <clears throat> but first thing we'll do is we'll get the light source done. So now again, it's coming from this side. one you can run this up a little bit higher because the angles not quite as severe as it is here to the light source put the highlight into the shadow. I'll keep it, let it butt right up against it if you want. That's usually what I do. Let that run down farther again. And again, your hot 
right. It doesn't take long to do the highlights, so I'm not going to stop and, and do them. I will do them all right now. But again, now your highlight is going to be coming from over here. So what I always try and do is I always try and judge the angle. I keep that one source. So in this case, it's actually, I guess it could be, you could use this magnet in my case. So that's always the light source. So, so the light does kind of change angle as it is seen by the chain. <clears throat> so I try and do that a little bit, right? So when I get up here, you're gonna have a highlight that's gonna be more over here instead of up higher. And like down here, the, the angle of the highlight's gonna be different. on this one here. So your angle here is going to be totally different because your light source is now coming from up that way. So your hotspot is going to be more over in this area. <clears throat> and again, you do not have to do that. You can keep your light source at exactly the same angle if you want to. And where that can be really helpful is if you are trying to um, make something large and you use it as a something to map your scale basically one now because you got these in a different place. You're only going to get a highlight here. You might get a touch there actually. source would still be hitting right there. And again, I'll put my highlight right there. Basically, like I was saying, you just have to worry about exactly where your light source is coming from, and that's where your, your highlight is going to be, right in line with that. So now, like I said, your highlight from there is going to be just about right on the very end. coming down the side really on this one. It's going to be just at the end.
this one because of where that bar is going across you're not going to get any highlight down here at all <clears throat> if you do it's just going to be a very very light one right here but there won't be any big highlight at this end because that big highlight would actually be underneath where that bar is so that bar is casting a shadow so there will not be one there <clears throat> Okay, so we'll move down and do these last two at the bottom, and then we'll go up and do those other three. And you definitely do not want these magnets to stick to each other. They stick really good. These are, they're just a rare earth magnet, but wow, they work good. So again, as before, we're not worried about the blue or the black. We're just worried about getting the light source. Now that light source is coming from way up in this corner now. So it's coming from here all the way down. So the angle is completely different than it is over here now. side can actually catch light. So because of the angle, that's why you're getting such a long light flash on this one. And it will also pick up over here, but your highlight would be right where that bar is. This one there's not going to be a bright highlight here either you can kind of you can fudge it if you want and put one in but really where that next link is is really going to be blocking where the highlight would be That's pretty much where it is. I mean, I guess you could kind of fudge it and put one in right about here, I guess. Not quite where it should be, but... And then same over here, too. You can put one... Mm, would almost be more appropriate over here. trying to keep the light sources as accurate as possible. I guess sometimes that's just improbable. <laughs> okay. I'm actually going to slide this over a bit. And that way we can work our way 
back up here. <clears throat> so now we're getting on this one here. You don't have to worry about the links getting in the way on this guy. None of the links will be in the way. So your light source is going to come down. You're going to get a good highlight there. You're going to get a good one on the other side. Highlight is on the corner of the link because that's where it would actually be catching that light would be right in about there. And you can run that highlight all the way up on this one again that whole side is catching light. Same thing, your highlight's going to be just about over in this, it will be over in this corner. <clears throat> and again, you can pull that down a ways, it's going to disappear before it gets to the shadow. You'll want to knock it out. So you just Fade that away as you come down the side. And your highlight is going to be right about here. three left. Okay, and again, now your light source is going to move again. It's going to be almost directly on the end of this one. there. Almost end on. So now your highlight's going to end right about there. It's not going to be able to go around that curve. It's just not going to have anything to catch. Same thing. Okay, so your highlight's going to be probably right in around there. Like it's just slightly off the end. It's not going to catch much. This side might catch a little bit more than the other side did. But I would still do the same thing, just run it out and fade it away.
this one here, you're going to get a little bit more because it's coming in almost from the side. But because of the way that the blue is and that, you're not going to see a huge amount of that because it's going to be on white. You will see some. Okay, so just the two more left to go here. <clears throat> so now your light source is coming from way over here. That's coming straight across. So it's going to hit right in here. On this one here, it's going to hit just about end on again. Pretty close. Okay, so light source way over on the on the left hand side. So that light's gonna come in, it's gonna hit over in here on this end. And again, like I said, I'm keeping that highlight out from the edge so it looks more like a three-dimensional object. You're not gonna want to go too far with that highlight, because that other Link is going to be in the way. So I highlight right in about here. Now you can bring that down farther even, but you're not going to see it because that part is already white. It's catching a lot of light in there. And yeah, you're not going to get anything over there because that link is in the way. So you can put your highlight right in here. when your highlight is going to be just a hair over top of that other link. And you're not going to go down very far on the side because of how close you are to being in on. here now this is going to be a little bit different because you're only going to get just a hair of that highlight coming out from underneath this link. Just a very very small bit. I mean you can extend it out just to accentuate it a little bit so that you actually know it's there. <coughs> Okay. 
Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stop here. I got to pull all the magnets off of this that I've got laid out. I'm going to remask these ones and unmask the other ones. So when I'm done doing that, I'll I'll be back and we'll continue doing the other links and then we can pull the entire mask off, see how everything looks and go in and do any final tweaking or anything like that that you want to after the mask is already off. <clears throat> okay, so I will be back shortly. Okay, and I've switched all the masks around now so the other links are now exposed and we'll do the same thing that we did. On the other one, we'll lay in the sky color first. Remember, ignore your light source. Your light source does not matter at this point. <clears throat> so your lights or your sky color is going to be coming straight down from the top, just like it was before. to do one now because you're, you're only working on one piece at a time this one's going to be kind of opposite the other one and blue is going to be more on that end but this one's this one's pretty close to straight so you are going to see the blue down Quite a ways there. Okay, and then this one here. Let's see. A little bit. There we go. Now I'm just going to work my way around and come back. Okay, so this one here, your sky color, again, coming from the top, you're going to see more of it on that tip, hardly any on that tip. This one's going to be just about exactly the opposite to what that one was. So you're going to see lots on the top of that end. And just a little bit around that end. So I could just do this all at once, but I don't. It'll be something I have to invest in. Now again, we're almost flat again, just like this one up here was. This one's almost flat as well, just a little bit the opposite way. So this one's going to be just about even on both ends. You don't want to get these magnets stuck together. They stick really, really well to each other. So 
So I really hope everybody's getting something out of this and, and out of the other video that I did. There will be a lot more coming up in the future. And like I said before, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I will get back to you. Please like the video and subscribe. That will help me grow the channel so I can do more for you guys. <clears throat> and girls. And ladies and gentlemen. And everybody out there. Okay, so we should be able to run through all of these now until we're finished. So again, it's going to be a little bit more on this end because of the angle that it's at. We'll get some around the end though, for sure. That's that one. Okay, this one here is almost end on, so you'll get good lighting up here. Any real wrap around at the bottom on this one. And this guy here is a little bit more on this end. And now this one, because he's straight up and down, you're not going to get anything really down the sides of anything on this one. You can just to emphasize it a bit if you want to bring a little bit down. But the way that this one is curved, right? So you're going to get a little bit of a curve at the top. You can actually bring that blue all the way down a bit until it reaches where the side would be. So if you have a fairly rounded end like we have on these, that blue will be able to carry down just a little bit. that. <clears throat> None of the other ones are sitting at an angle enough where that's going to happen. The other ones are all more side on or top on. But this one here, yeah, you're going to get that wrapping around that edge, around that corner. Like that. Okay, so now that's the blue done. I'll we'll switch over to the black and I'll do the same thing now that I did the last time. I'll do the first few with the black and then I will do the rest and come back for the highlights. The black takes a little bit longer, so it's better you guys just sitting around watching me spray the same thing over and over again. because this is just one pass now it makes it much much easier uh, actually I'll start down here at the bottom seeing because everything's already set up down here so I'll do these ones for you guys and then I'll do the top ones and come back okay so this one down here again same thing you can run this reflection up higher and actually you can bring it up almost halfway if you want to and bring in another piece down here because again this is your horizon line so it just depends where you have your horizon Show. So again here, now I'm going to go right dark at the very bottom edge because that's reflecting exactly what's under it. And again I can run that darker color up a little bit.
And again, that's that's the simple way of doing it right there. I mean, you can do so much more with this. Which when we get it unmasked, I'll kind of give you an idea of how much farther you can actually take this from being a simple chrome to being a really, really good chrome. I'm sorry, I guess I didn't get that one in for you. <clears throat> thought I was down far enough. I guess not. So anyway, I did that bottom one there, and like you can see the way that I did the shadow on that so that it's coming up a little bit, just like the blue's coming down. I'm sorry I didn't quite get that in there for you. I thought I had you on camera, and I can't really do it again. Okay, so this one here. And here ground is going to come up. And again, you can be about halfway if you want to be. And on this end, you just want to have a little bit less of an uptick at that end. Because again, this is a fairly flat one. And we'll put a little bit more uptick here. And I'm sorry you guys can't see that because the magnet's in your way. And darken up the very bottom edge. Again, this is just a very basic chrome. Um, like I said, when I unmask it at the end here, I'll, I'll give you guys some ideas of what you could do with this. In order to make it as chrome as possible. Just remember, like I was saying earlier in the videos, it, it's a mirror. It sees everything around it. It's all going to reflect in it. And a lot of that will be color too, right? Like if, for example, a red car is going by, you're going to see that red car. That's all there is to it. it it's going to be in there. Okay, now again, this one's going to be a little bit different because of the angle that it's at. This is actually going to be a very interesting one for doing this piece of chrome. <clears throat> so basically what you're going to want to do with this now is you're going to want to start over this way and then come up. Because this can see the ground over here on this edge. And come like that. Come all the way up like this. And then what's going to change at this end is you can actually flare it out a little bit. And again, the reason I went all the way up is because of the angle that the vinyl is on here, or that the link is on. That's not the point of the exercise. Yeah, that's lifting a lot. <laughs> Definitely going to be some overspray there. And keep that in dark.
Okay, so these next two are both fairly flat, so I'm not going to do those. I'll do these two over here at this end. Because those two are both at an angle. The rest of them are fairly flat. So I'll do this guy. Definitely attracted to one another. Bring that horizon line up, and again, we're going to flip it over this way at this end. Maybe put a little bit of a tail on it that runs back up. because as soon as you start getting up around that corner, you're getting the blue from the sky kicking in. And that's, you know, means that it can't see the ground anymore. on the angle that they're at, what they're going to see. <clears throat> so this one over here now is going to see more of the ground on this end, just like the other one did on the other end. This one here now, your highlight is actually going to be in the shadow.
much, much brighter at this end. Now this next one now is going to be totally different. direction over there. So your highlight is going to be pretty much right on that corner again. This one again. Okay, perfect. So this one here again. Now this one's going to be more on top. This next one's going to be an interesting one because there's not going to be a lot of highlight on it. Because of the angle that it's at. This one here again, you're going to be catching a little bit more on the dark side than you are on the light side, but you don't have to do a long reflection here, a long light source, because of the angle that it's at. I can just go far enough to get it across the other link. And while 
we're finishing up, I guess I can tell you what uh, I was saying how you can take this effect so much farther on a piece like this. And what I meant by that was that if you really want to get carried away with the chrome, each link is going to be reflecting in the other link. So here you would be able to see where that loops. It would loop up a little bit in the side of this one. This one here, you would see the end of it in this one. You'd see the other side of it over there. You know, like you can really get carried away with reflections when you're doing chrome because, like I said, you have to remember it's a mirror and it sees everything around it. But again, this is this is just a more basic chrome. I just wanted to show you how you can use it on different objects. Could end up being in the middle, right? On oh, this, unfortunately, we haven't had any that quite lined up exactly with my light source, and that was on purpose. <coughs> okay, and then this one here, your yeah, light source is going to go down this side, it's going to disappear because that's the light side of the object. Like I said, I just wanted to give you guys the idea of how Chrome is going to work on different objects. So the next video is actually going to be uh, tomorrow's Friday. Today's, yeah. The next video is probably not going to be up until next weekend. And the reason for that is because the next Chrome demo is going to be um, a skull. So it's going to be a little bit more complicated yet. i got to make the stencil and everything. Set it up the same as we did here. <clears throat> but I mean, for right now, that gives you a basic idea of just how Chrome works on different angles and things like that, where the last video I did, everything was pretty static. Um, I wanted you to see how things work when you're doing different angles and, and slightly different shapes and combining them together. So like I said, the next one is going to be a skull. Um, so again, that one's going to be a very fun one to do. Um, and like I said, that video probably will not be up until next weekend. So. Yeah. Alright everybody, well there you have it. Um, a chrome chain, uh, very simple but very effective way of doing it. Um, you can apply that technique to virtually any object that you can find, basically. Um, so like I said, I hope you get something out of this. Um, if you do have questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, if you like the video, please like the video, subscribe, uh, share it, and uh, we'll see if we can get some more people here. And the more we get, the, um, the more suggestions and the better the channel is going to get over time. Um, I'm just here to do this, like I said, for you guys. So if you have any questions or anything like that, any suggestions, please let me know. Thank you very much, and like I said, the other video will be not available until next weekend. Um, I'm going camping for three days. <laughs> Relax. It's going to be nice. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'll get that done and up next weekend for you. That'll be the skull. Um, and like I said, I hope everybody's liking the videos um, and you're getting something out of them. 
Thanks for showing up to KO Airbrushing's tutorials, and I'll see you again in a couple of weeks, or, or in a week, just over a week.